Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Walt here from Down the Block Sports, and today we're talking about the Boston Celtics. Yes, the Celtics defeat the Houston Rockets 118 to 102 last night, and that really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, as the Rockets are one of the worst teams in the NBA. Now, one of the biggest storylines from last night's games was Robert Williams having a near triple double, but what I want to talk about is the unbelievable fourth quarter from Evan Fournier, the guard the Celtics acquired from the Orlando Magic at the NBA trade deadline. What we're going to talk about is what Fournier looked like before that fourth quarter, break down his elite fourth quarter, and if that's a fluke or a sign of things to come for the Boston Celtics. So again, I'm Alec Walt. This is Down the Block Sports, and today we're talking about the Boston Celtics. So last night against the Houston Rockets in the 118-102 win for the Celtics, Evan Fournier had 23 points. Finally, that breakout game that Celtics fans have been desperately waiting for since he was acquired from the Magic. But the crazy thing about it is 20 of those 23 points came in the fourth quarter. And the best part about it is he shot 7 for 7 in that quarter and six of six from behind the arc. Now, I, I understand the Houston Rockets are not the most aggressive defensive team, let alone one of the worst teams in the NBA. But at the end of the day, if you're making six three-point shots in a single quarter, I don't care who you're playing, that's still pretty damn impressive. Now, his seven three-pointers made was a career high, and he's the second player in Celtics history over the last 25 years to hit 20 points while shooting 100% in a single quarter. The last person to do that was Paul Pierce against the Chicago Bulls in 2009. Now, what I want to do is I want to talk about what Fournier has been like, you know, before this breakout quarter against the Houston Rockets. In the first 11 quarters for Fournier since he joined the Boston Celtics, he played 85 total minutes, was 4 for 22 from the field, 0 for 11 from 3. Now, now remember, this is the guy who I said was going to bring that electric three-point shooting element on my reaction video I released on Down the Block Sports just a few days ago. You can definitely check that out if you'd like. Eight total points. Okay, that's two games and three quarters. In that fourth quarter against the Rockets last night, in eight total minutes, he was seven for seven from the field, six for six from three, and scored 20 points. Now, also in my reaction video, I made it very clear when it came to the Evan Fournier situation, I believe. He has the chance to start, is a starting caliber player, but will start his Celtics career coming off the bench. He comes to Boston. He's coming off the bench. Marcus Smart's in the starting lineup. And it wasn't pretty, like I mentioned there in those numbers. When you're shooting over 11 from three and you're expected to make three-point shots, you know, that's not good. Now, obviously, when you're in Evan Fournier's situation, you're getting traded from the Orlando Magic to the Boston Celtics. You're going to a team that goes from low expectations to high expectations. You know, not to make fun of the Orlando fan base media market, but it's not that tough. Then you go to Boston where, you know, if you have a bad night, you're going to get booed. Um, He went from no media attention to a bunch of media attention. So when he wasn't doing very well, he was probably getting more pressure than really he's ever felt at any other time he was in his Orlando Magic career. And at the end of the day, this is professional sports. You got to get used to your new coaching staff, your your new teammates, your new role, your new organization. There's a lot of change. And it's, it's not that easy to just move around in the COVID-19 era. He had to take games off at the beginning because of like the wellness, whatever the rules are with the NBA. So it was not a very nice start to Evan Fournier's career. Now, the main question I want to answer here is, was this a fluke or a sign of things to come? At the end of the day, Celtics fans knew that he was going to eventually break out. He was a player that was starting on the Orlando Magic, averaging nearly 20 points per game in those matchups, was the the centerpiece of an offense going to a team where he's surrounded by three or four guys that are better than him offensively every single night. Like, yes, Nikola Vucevic and Aaron Gordon are very quality players that he was teammates with, 
But we're talking about guards and wings that are some of the better scorers in the league. Now, yes, Kemba Walker has been hit or miss at times with the Boston Celtics, but he's still a guy you can't forget about. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, one of the best young duos in the league. Fournier was adjusting to a new situation that was completely different than what he was experiencing. And at the end of the day, as he was going through that transition role, he was struggling. He, he was not shooting very well from the field. Now, if the Celtics can find a way. Now, do I expect Evan Fournier to go six for six all the time in fourth quarters and be that Michael Jordan guy that we can give the ball to and just take it over the game? And No, I think that's extremely unrealistic. I think that'd be unbelievably irresponsible of me if I was to mention that on this podcast. But at the end of the day, he needed to just break out and have, like, finally. Like he even said after the game, he was going to enjoy a glass of wine. Now, when I look at the Boston Celtics situation, I said on that previous show, and I'll say it again right now, I do think it'd be best for the Celtics if they could find a way to start Fournier and move Marcus Smart to the bench. An early three from Fournier, bring Smart off the bench, provide energy, while Smart still gets his 25, 30 minutes per night like he will normally, and he has the ability to play all four positions defensively. Smart last night didn't have the best game. I don't think it's that big of a deal because he finished plus 19 and had an outstanding defensive game. But um, at the end of the day, when I look at this situation right now, I don't think of that fourth quarter as a fluke. Um, I don't also don't expect him to start the next two games. I do think the Celtics need to look at it as like, okay, you made these shots in this quarter, prove it again against the Hornets. You know, prove it again against the game after that. I still don't think he's ready to start because we do need to see a little more of a track record behind what he can do. Not that he hasn't done it before, but with this team on this specific roster, he's only been here for three games. So I I give it about three or four more games, and I think the Celtics should seriously explore changing around this roster. They're 24 and 25 right now. They're incredibly inconsistent. Something needs to change. And, yes, Danny Ainge has been taking a lot of the blame, and I do give him a lot of credit for doing that. But at the end of the day, if the Celtics get an early three from Fournier and have Marcus Smart bring energy off the bench, I think it's going to completely change the way this team plays basketball. Do I think this team is a playoff contender? No. I think the Celtics are going to play one of the – they're going to play a top seed eventually in the East, whether they advance in the first round or not, depending on their seeding, and I don't think they're going to win. They're going to lose to the Nets. They're going to lose to the Bucs. They're going to lose to the Sixers. Heck, if they play the Heat, I don't think they're winning that matchup either. So the Celtics got a lot of work to do. And if you want me to be brutally honest with you, they have been the biggest disappointment in basketball this year. Something needs to change in Boston. You're not going to play every team – like the, the Houston Rockets every single week. At the end of the day, your competition is going to get higher. The pressure is going to get higher. You know, was it nice seeing Evan Fournier hit that many threes in a quarter in a low-pressure game? Yes, it was great. When you make a three, finally, you know, he needed that. But at the end of the day, the Celtics need to make an adjustment. And I think the adjustment eventually will be Fournier entering the starting lineup. So was I completely disappointed in, our, in his first four games? Yes. Was I not loving the first three quarters of yesterday's game? Yes, sir. But was it nice to see him finally splash some threes, get high fives from his teammates, look loose, say after the game that he was going to enjoy a glass of wine? Absolutely. freaking lutely So I don't think yesterday was a fluke. I think Evan Fournier is finally starting to feel comfortable. He needed to make those shots yesterday. And that's exactly what he did in the fourth quarter. So we'll see how he looks against the Charlotte Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets are going to be a tough matchup because it's a revenge game. Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, uh, guys like that. I mean, Gordon Hayward is dealing with an injury, so he may not play. But scary Terry, when he gets angry, he puts some numbers on the board. I, don't, I think the Celtics should possibly win that game. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you're playing in that revenge-type attitude, it helps. So... Good job for Evan Fournier yesterday. I hope this is a sign for things to come. Yes, I don't expect him to go six for six in the fourth quarter of every single game. I think that's extremely irresponsible, but he finally got the monkey off his back. He finally was able to relax, and I really hope he enjoyed that glass of wine last night after the big game. That's going to be it for this reaction to Evan Fournier's elite fourth quarter yesterday for the Boston Celtics. What do you think is is your takeaway from that game? Feel free to comment that below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Down the Block Sports for more of my exclusive content. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and go Celtics.